Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I have had a big request to do some embroidery machine sewing tutorials. So I made a in the hoop cigarette lighter holder that actually works without melting and stuff. Uh, so if you would like to see how I make this, please stay tuned. All right, so I have, I am doing my big hoop. So this does 200 by 300 centimeters or approximately 8 by 12. Uh, so what I have done to do key fobs, I have actually cut a piece of like really thick plastic, which has been in the sun and is starting to break, but whatever. Um, so this is a template. So instead of having to measure every single time I want to make um, key rings, I can just trace around this and cut it out so it's much quicker than having to measure each time and that's mainly because I don't have an eight and a half inch ruler because I think that would be too big so I'm, I'm literally just using a pen whatever pen I can see um, and then I'm just chopping it up with my comfy scissors which if you guys are in the market for a pair of scissors I highly recommend these they take some like they take a day or two to get used to because they feel different to other scissors, but they are amazing. All right, so I need two pieces because I need a front piece and I need a back piece. <clears throat> so now that that's done, we're gonna hoop some stabilizer. Now with stabilizer, there's like a million different types. I use tear away, so this literally will tear. Um, you can get cutaway, you can get water soluble, you can get uh, sticky backed and all of those different types. You can get sticky back water soluble, sticky back um, tear away. They come in a million different things. I pretty much only really use the tear away for all my stuff. The only time I use different stuff is I sometimes I'll use like a wash away if I'm doing freestanding lace or if I'm doing um, like patches. So the final stitching edge on a patch, I do the, the wash away so that it looks amazing. So I've just hit, uh, hooped that. You want it fit, um, tight like a drum is how everybody says. Um, and I've just cut like a whole piece so I can now just tear off the excess and that will do a second hooping. Uh, so I buy this stuff by the roll. It's excessive. It's like a hundred meter roll, but it works for me. Okay. So a couple of ways you can now do this. You need to find the center and on my hoop, my hoop, even though it's filthy, has these little center notches so that it's easy to center things up. Um, if I was doing a bag, I'd draw the center lines, but because this pretty much takes up the whole hoop, I kind of know where it's going. So I need it to sit there like that. Now I've got two, well, I've got three options really. I can just leave it sit like that and hope it doesn't move, which I'm not going to do. Or I can put down basting spray, like for quilting, um, which is like a temporary adhesive that won't gum up your needle. Or I can do double-sided tape. So I'm going to do double-sided tape, which I forgot to grab for the video, so I hold that thought. So I'm just going to take just a little bit along here and then along here. So I don't need to put lots on because the first stitch in this particular stitch out is like a basting stitch. So I just need to hold this long enough for it to start stitching around. Now, obviously, in this size hoop, I'm not just doing one key ring. I'm going to do multiples. So now I'm going to fold it in half again. And then this center fold needs to line up with that center mark spots like that. And then you can just push down, roll it open, and push down. And that is now in. So this is how I hoop uh, key rings. This is not how I hoop bags or t-shirts. Uh, but this is a little bit more forgiving. So I have deliberately added half an inch around all of this for any errors because I do it quickly. All right, now over to the machine. Okay, so I've already loaded my design. Um, and because this is like 
a very expensive machine. It tells me all the colors and it's all color touch screen and everything like that. But that bit's actually pretty irrelevant. The main thing I wanted to show you is my bobbins I buy as a pre-wound box. So you can get them in white and black. I'm actually on my last little bit of black now, but because I'll be doing black for most of this, I've put black in the bobbin. And so then I'm just going to load my hoop. Uh, and that is the noise because it's got to move over to the center because it's the big size hoop. Um, and so now it's going to tell me here that it's going to do the edge stitch first. So I'm just going to run that through. Ah, actually, and I should also check my speed. When um, embroidering with vinyl, you never want to go faster than 600, um, whatever it is, stitches per minute, I assume. Um, and I've also got a ballpoint needle in. So, uh, here's another packet. So I'm just using uh, ballpoint needles that I got from Spotlight. They're just for normal machines. They're like 80, size 80 or a 12. Um, the ballpoint helps to keep the space open for the thread to go through so it doesn't break all the time. So I highly recommend that too. Threaded. My machine's been doing this lately. It doesn't like me at the moment. It probably needs another service. Um, but it has an electric needle threader, so whatever. And then I'm just going to go back a few stitches. Um, it usually picks it up within 20 stitches that it's lost its thread. used a program to set this up when you buy the design you just get a single one so I went into I use so what pro it's like an editing tool I can't create them in there but I can edit them so what I do is I line them all up on the design and then group all of the same stitches together in different colors right. I could actually hear that that was broken then it doesn't love me today apparently Sometimes it does this, and other times it behaves really well. It's just temperamental. So another reason I cut this a little bit bigger than the design is because if I was to put the designs right at the edge I'd still have a lip to be able to cut them out with um, which means I get more out of my hoop. So these ones will only fit six but some of the smaller key fobs that I do I can fit nine per page if I squish them in really well. Because when this isn't temperamental I can just walk away from it. Apparently not today though. deal is today. Thank goodness for the back button. 
Most machines will have like a jump forward or back a certain amount of stitches. That didn't work either. Now it's just being fussy because it's being filmed, I swear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that and I'm just going to pull a little bit extra out. If this doesn't work, I don't know what its issue is. As you can see, 600 is still quite fast enough uh, to get things done. So this says in total it will take 23 minutes to stitch. That's my machine telling me to change colours. So I'm going to go with yellow. I actually have the yellow out. I should probably get the other colours out. Just stack mine up here. See that that's about to have an issue before we even go any further. So I'm just going to pull out the dodgy bit. Actually, I actually think my cut is blunt and that's what's causing most of my issues.
done. Um, I obviously turned it off watching after a while just because it all did the same thing. So anyway, now we're going to attach our back piece. So you just flip it over. And so what we want to do is we want to have this sit in the center. Now because we can see, oh hold on, you can't see where I'm pointing. Because we can see all of these stitches, I know where this needs to sit. So I just need to make sure that it is completely covering it. Now again, you can use two different types of sticky tape. You can either use double sided tape or masking tape along the top. You don't want to use anything apart from them as they don't really work as well. Now my child has used all of my masking tape, so I will be using double sided tape. Now this one I'm going to do a lot more tape than the top because it's fighting gravity at this point. So I want to tape all the way along the top and the bottom. If you want to you can even put some more here just right on the edge like so. You want to try and keep it out of the stitch zone. <coughs> Basically, you really don't want this to move because if it folds on itself, uh, there's a good chance it'll snap the needle. It'll also wreck your whole project. You'll have to go again, none of which are ideal. So I'm just going to peel the backing off here. I like that. And then again, so I'm going to kind of fold it in half. So I can see roughly where halfway is and then just, oh, see that's really crooked. Then I'm just going to, I'm not going to push too hard, I'm just going to smooth it down. If you need to push harder, put your hand underneath and squish it that way because you don't want to push the, because um, this is tear away, you don't want to push it out of the stabilizer. Another thing you can do is flip it back over and then apply pressure. Just rubbing, making sure that it's super, super stuck. Uh, and so now we're going to go back to the machine. Alright guys, I have put a black bobbin in because I'm putting black on the top. If you were going to put purple on top, you'd put purple in the bobbin. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it going.
always now flip it over to double check that all of them actually stitched because if they haven't, I can go and put it back in the machine. Uh, but we're all good, so now you can unhoop it. You just pop the hoop off and you can put that aside. <clears throat> now for me, it's always easier to rip off the excess before I start cutting them out because then it's not in the way. It's not perfect, but like a rough that. Now, you can get some embroidery cutting scissors, uh, but they are quite expensive and I personally don't think they last very long. These scissors here are from the gardening section of Bunnings and they were $4. So they're sharp enough because they're designed to cut, like take cuttings from trees. So they're insanely sharp. They've got a good, nice big handle so my hands don't hurt. And so these are what I use to cut out all my key fobs. And when they do eventually get sharp, I will just go and buy another four pair, four dollar pair of scissors. So now you can just cut. Now I leave about probably about an eighth of an inch around the whole design because uh, you don't want to accidentally um, clip the stitches. So you just want to leave like a little bit of a border as you're cutting around. I assume you guys can see this. I'm not looking at the camera anymore. So you want to get nice and close, but not too close. And then when I get to here, I'm just going to cut it off so that I'm not dealing with the bulk of that. And then I can come back in and just trim this bit here. I like to get nice and close. I probably didn't have to go down into that section. And then just round that off. Now I've got a bit of a bird's nest going on here. So I will actually just be trimming that off. Um, and this is a rayon thread. So you could probably singe it with a lighter. And then because this is a lighter holder, you should be able to get your finger in there. Like so. Um, and then I suppose I should go and get a lighter to put it in. I'm also just going to trim this. I've just got like a random thread here. That's all fixed. So that's the general idea. I will go and get a lighter and my press studs and stuff and we'll finish it up. Okay, so I got my supplies. Um, cam snaps. I keep mine in a box and I also keep the dies for my cam press in the box with the cam snaps because that's just what I have found to be easiest. And put the base in first and then just twist the top in. Like so. Okay, so I puncture the holes because I find that easier. So I'm just going to do a small hole here and then a small hole down there somewhere. So I want to go close but not on the stitching. Pull out that bit there. Now, which end did I put in first? Alright, so I might go red because of the red flames. It probably doesn't really matter. Um, and so here's the other thing with these. You're going to put both the tops on the top like this. If I can stab it through the hole. So then that they clip together. So when I first made these, that was my first mistake. And I always put the base one down at the bottom. Because I'm pretty sure I've put the base. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the bottom hole first with the female path. Like so, and then I'm going to come and do, I'm going to switch this out. Now again, normally I would do this in batches, so I'm not switching it every single thing, because that's ridiculous. You could also set up both the cam presses, because I've got two, and then just do them both at the same time if you wanted to do it that way. Alright, so then I'm going to do the other end, and squish that down. And so then I've just got um, key rings. But you could also put lobster claw clips in there, um, and that way you can clip them onto stuff. I do it this way so I can keep the cost down and sell them cheaper, because these are much less expensive than a whole lobster claw. But you could still sell them with a lobster claw or give them the lobster claw option. But yeah, so that is now a lighter holder. I forgot to grab the lighter after all that, but you do get the idea. It does fit a lighter. I have proved that because I sell them. I wouldn't sell them if they didn't fit. Uh, but a big lighter, mini lighters will get lost down the bottom. 
So I hope that was helpful. Um, and I will do another tutorial for you soon. Bye guys.